Hello wonderful art friends, my name's Chloe Henderson and welcome back to my monthly updates. This October I got up to a bunch of wonderful things. I started off the month with a couple of holidays in a row which was a really nice start to the month and then we got into a bunch of arty shenanigans including my first ever fair in person for quite a long time at the Edinburgh Scene Fair which was fantastic and then towards the end of the month there were a bunch of spooky fun things that we got up to as well so I hope you enjoy watching all of the wonderful things I got up to this month in this little vlog. Enjoy! Our first holiday adventure of the month was an unexpected trip to Dumfries and Galloway. My dad basically messed up his dates a little bit with his boys week away and ended up being busy for part of it so for a weekend there was an Airbnb available and a few bedrooms spare so myself and Stuart and my brother and his girlfriend and my uncle and his partner all went and enjoyed this lovely Airbnb for the weekend and it was really chilled out and lovely. Um, we played loads of games and ate lots of nice food and I figured out that I'm rubbish at Scrabble. <laughs> and we also, or myself and Stuart, managed to brave the very wet weather. It rained pretty much the whole weekend that we were there. And we went and fed some wild deer, which was really cool, and went to an awesome crystal museum. And there was a little farm that we went to as well, and a cool castle. And it was just really good fun and a nice start to my month. And then the weekend after my first holiday, it was time for my second holiday of the month. <laughs> October was really great in having two holidays in one. And definitely the breaks that I needed. So this time we were off to Drummore with the Coin Operated Press team, so myself and Stuart and Katie and Erin. And Drummore is just a little ways away from the southernmost point of Scotland, which is a place that we visited. There's a really cool lighthouse there. And we basically just hung out and played Dungeons and Dragons and ate lots of snacks and enjoyed some lovely walks and the scenery and it was all really nice. And on our way home we went to the Logan Botanical Gardens as well as the, the lighthouse at the southernmost point and it was a really lovely weekend and I had such a lovely time and I can't wait to do more coin operated press holidays in the future. <laughs> At my desk today I'm going digital and finally catching up on all the bits of vlogs and blogs and Patreon posts that I've been neglecting over the past few months. I think with having Covid in July and that completely taking over my July and then trying to catch up with various things in August and, and trying to enjoy the festival times in August as well and then September all of my holidays were crammed into one month so I didn't really get a chance to catch up on all of the little bits of things that I've been making and <laughs> bits of things that I've filmed. So this is me finally settling into making some vlogs, blogs and patron posts so stay tuned for a lot of that coming very very soon or maybe by the time this vlog is posted it's already out? <laughs> Who knows but it'll be posted down in the description and you can check it all out. Something really really exciting has just arrived and I can't wait to share it with you. So let's open this little box. Da, 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 da. Ah, it's my international scene one scenes. Oh look how cool they are. It's so colourful. Oh, I really love how this looks. Let's have a quick flick through together. Oh, the print quality is really good and it's so colourful. Oh, I really love this scene. It's turned out so well. Oh, this is so cool. I love it so much. Oh, I'm so excited to get these in my shop. Ah, so excited. Right, okay. If you want a copy of the zine, I will drop a link down in the description below and you can grab your own copy. Go and check it out now. They're so cool and I'm so excited. A couple of boxes of exciting things have just arrived, so let's unbox them together. Let's go into the big box first. You might be able to see it already. Ta da! Big A4. Oh, these ones on the top are a little bit scrunched. Other oh, ones underneath here. Okay, so it's just the top one. Big A4 candy stripe bags. Super cool. And then let's go on to this other little box. Uh, so many boxes on my desk right now. Let me move this one out of the way. And this slightly smaller box. Smaller but thicker. So there's more in here. Let's see. Ah, more candy stripe bags. 
Ta-da! These are the little A5 size ones. So if you've ever bought anything from me before, you might recognize these little bags, which are the ones that I use for my pins and mini zines and stickers and the smaller things. But I thought I finally I would match and I've got the bigger ones to fit my prints and then the medium ones to fit like my smaller prints and my zines and bigger things and then these little mini ones that can still be used for my stickers and pins etc. So here we have all my bags. Oh, it's so excited. Big one. Medium one. Little one. Yay! So if you order anything from my store, these are the bags that you'll get. And the link is in my bio if you want to check out any of my awesome things. It's mid-October at the moment, a few days before the Edinburgh Zine Fest and I am dusting off all of my old market stuff, as you can see here. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting back into doing real life events. So this is me doing a little bit of TLC on my market stuff that hasn't been used for such a long time. So here you can see my postcard rack and some other rack bits of miscellaneous racks and holders and stuff. And then my wood slices, which I use to display items on and that they're all fine. This is the fine pile of things that aren't damaged or need any TLC, so they're all fine. And then we've got my two crates down here, which definitely need a bit of a repaint, and I'm gonna go through my little emergency kit of all the random things that I need, like Sharpies and tape and safety pins and all of that, and I'm gonna go through my signage as well. And then up here is the stuff that needs a lot more TLC, and there's a few new acquisitions as well. So I'm going to be painting all of these black and giving them a bit more of a protective coat so they don't look so bad in the future, because you can see here a bunch of them are basically looking like this and need, need a bit more work done to them. So that's my job for today, is making all my market stuff look lovely again in time for all the upcoming awesome events that I've got going on this month. A lot of my October was spent doing prep work for not only the Edinburgh Scene Fair but a bunch of other fairs, markets and exhibitions that I've got coming up at the end of this month and into November and December as well. So I'll leave my events page linked down in the description below and you can check out all the awesome events that I've got coming up. But one of the main things that I did towards the Edinburgh Zine Fair was to print out a bunch of my little mini zines. I didn't know what to expect, it's been such a while since I've done fairs in person, but I wanted to make sure that I had enough of all of my little zines. So I printed out 10 of each of my minis, because I've got loads of them and that's as much printer ink as I had, so I used up the whole cartridge printing up 10 copies of like 40 different mini zines and I spent my time cutting, folding and putting them all together which is what you can see in this clip and I really really wish I could do it this fast. How amazing would it be to be able to print and cut and fold all of these zines within a minute? But alas, this took me like a whole day. But it was totally worth it by the time I got to the fair because loads of my mini zines sold, which was fantastic. So thank you so much to everybody who came out to the fair and who bought one of my mini zines because I've now sold out of a bunch of them and I'm gonna need to buy another cartridge of ink so I can print more. <laughs> We had an absolute blast at Edinburgh Zine Fair. Thank you so much to everybody who came out to see myself and Coin Operated Press. It was really fantastic, especially for this being Coin Operated Press's first ever outing into the real world. This is the first fair we've ever done and it was so great. It was so nice to meet you all and thank you so much for buying all of our zines. So one of the wonderful things that we got to do this month was meet Storm. Storm is a 10 meter tall puppet made by Vision Mechanics. She's a goddess of the sea, made entirely out of recycled and natural materials. She walks the streets of Scotland, encouraging us all to celebrate our seas, encourage care for our coastlines and empower us all to put the environment first. And we were lucky enough to meet her on her journey into the Royal Botanic Gardens in Edinburgh, which was really, really nice and we were lucky that it was such a lovely day. And we were lucky enough to be there in time to see her being operated. So there are puppeteers that are dressed in yellow raincoats and they operate her. So she was moving backwards and forwards in the space. And it was really, really cool to be able to see her. Uh, she is out on her journey at the moment and I think is making her way to COP26. So she'll be in Glasgow at the time of me recording this. But I will leave a link down in the description below to where her journey is so you can catch her if you're in Scotland and hopefully see her somewhere out in the wild because it's really, really cool and I'd highly recommend checking her out if you can. 
I thought I'd read out Storm's little description from the Vision Mechanics website so you can learn a little bit more about her. So Storm is a 10 meter tall mythical goddess of the sea created for Vision Mechanics by Kim Bergesal, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, and Simon McIntyre. This fantastical puppet celebrates our oceans and coastlines and raises awareness of the crucial role that they play in mitigating climate change. Standing at over two double-decker buses high and weighing in at around 500 kilos, Storm has been constructed and woven from recycled and natural materials. Storm is operated by ten puppeteers pulling ropes and levers that manipulate her legs, head and arms in synchronised movements. And she really is a wonder to see. And I hope that their vision for Storm is making a difference and people are starting to become more aware of just how important the impacts of what we do in our daily lives with our waste and what big corporations do with their waste. Storm is supposed to be an embodiment of all of this trash that is um, dumped into our oceans coming together and coming to life into a creature that is trying to raise awareness of that fact and I thought it was really stunning and I felt really moved by this performative piece and as I said I'd highly recommend you check her out if you can. Another cool art piece that we got to see this month was Luke Jerram's Gaia, which is a spectacular sculpture of Earth that was floating majestically in the main entrance of Dynamic Earth, and we got to see it during one of the Dynamic Earth planetarium nights, so seeing it all lit up at night was really really cool. Gaia is a Turing artwork by UK artist Luke Jerram, measuring 7 metres in diameter and created from 120 dpi detailed NASA imagery of the Earth's surface. The artwork provides the opportunity to see our planet floating in three dimensions. The installation aims to create a sense of the overview effect, which was first described by author Frank White in 1987. Common features of the experience for astronauts are a feeling of awe for the planet, a profound understanding of the interconnection of all life, and a renewed sense of responsibility for taking care of the environment. The artwork also acts as a mirror to major events in society. In light of the current COVID-19 pandemic, the artwork may provide the viewer with a new perspective of our place on the planet, a sense that societies of Earth are all interconnected and that we have a responsibility toward one another. After the lockdown, there has been a renewed respect for nature. For me, standing under this Earth, I felt really small, and I think part of that was due to the planetarium show that we saw in which we were taken on a journey of our universe and made to feel tiny and insignificant, but there's a beauty in feeling insignificant. And that combined with seeing Storm, I did feel a bit of a sense of sadness standing under this Earth. I think because I mourn for the fact that at the rate that we're destroying the planet, we might not be able to enjoy awesome artworks like this in the future. And that is a really sad thought. Last but not least, at the end of this month, we had an awesome spooky adventure. <laughs> I say awesome, but it was wet and windy. Classic Scottish Halloween. We went pumpkin picking in the rain and the cold and I was really determined to find a pumpkin that was big enough to put on my head, but alas, there weren't any of the massive pumpkins left in this patch. <laughs> but it was still really good fun despite being really cold and wet. And we had a really nice family meal afterwards and carved our pumpkins and put out some pumpkins for the neighbor kids, which ended up getting smashed, but at least the neighborhood birds enjoyed the pumpkins in the morning. And it was a nice spooky end to the month. <laughs> it's wet. <laughs> Scottish Halloween. Come on. I want a big pumpkin. <laughs> but I want a big one. <laughs> I want to put it on my head. <laughs> There's no head size pumpkins. Not me. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching my spooky little October blog. If you enjoyed this video, do hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any art videos from me in the future. And be sure to hit the like button as well. And you can follow me on all of my socials at Chloe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.